about right now, control the line of scrimmage. All right, we weren't gonna miss a beat. 173 yards, front down! Yeah. Defense! Talking about getting off the field on third down. They were two for 12! Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. That was the sound of a bunch of Panthers celebrating. Keep pounding. That's what they kept doing against the Buccaneers, a 21-3 home victory for the Carolina Panthers in Steve Wilkes' debut. 21-3. As the interim head coach of the Carolina Panthers. Congratulations to everyone in Carolina, including interim head coach Steve Wilkes and, of course, su former XFL superstar, now NFL superstar, <laughs> P.J. Walker, it is uh, the Fantasy Bowl Happy Hour served by Applebee's. It's noon on a Monday on Peacock, but of course it's 5 o'clock somewhere, Jay Croucher. My name is Matthew Berry, and I think the only thing in this world more surprising than the, the Buccaneers getting their butts kicked yeah. by the Carolina Panthers, a, a Panthers team that has traded Robbie Anderson, has traded Chris McCaffrey, that appears to – they fired their head coach. They're like, we're playing for next year. Yeah. We're tanking. They're the, they're the team in your dynasty league that's like, hey, we're tanking. Yeah, they out. sent out the email to the whole league, like, open for business. Like, it ain't our year. Everything must go. That team kicked Tom Brady's ass. Like, yeah. just destroyed – the Tampa Bay Buccaneers up, down, sideways. And I think the only thing, Jay Croucher, more exciting, more surprising, more shocking than that, is this <laughs> giant, insane apple that showed up on our set. We walked in this morning. I wish you guys, for those that are listening on the podcast, I wish you guys could see this thing because it is literally the size. You know how, like, when the Mets hit a home run? Yeah, I was right. going to say, it's like Jacob deGrom kind of pulled this over here in his car this morning. Uh, he might have. Uh, listen, the Mets don't need it anymore. Let's no, be clear don't. about that. I, it, like, So, go Phillies. I, I was just, I mean, like, it's a massive apple. I don't know, like, I don't know what happened with this, Jay. <laughs> listen, you're smart. Like, you're smart. You're a big fan That's of a um, uh, of fine dining and everything like that. Do, does, <laughs> does, does, does that I? apple, I, I can't imagine that Applebee's people are happy about this, right? You know, like... Does that apple make you make you long for for you know for, now, for healthy casual dining with mainstream American dishes such as salads, chickens, pasta, burgers, and riblets? It does not. Doesn't make you think of riblets? No, it does not make me think of riblets. Like we love Applebee's here. The whole show is served by Applebee's. It's your friendly neighborhood bar. But I just I'm like, oh, look at that big giant neon apple. Now listen. I need a I need a plate of riblets. <laughs> That's not a phrase that anyone at home is saying, Jay Croucher. How did this get on our set? It's great that we keep bringing up the riblets. Now, listen, you did turn around initially and say, where is the big apple? And then you went, or you used a different Whoa. word, but you're like, oh, my God, I there's missed, the but apple. Now, now I can't unsee it. We have, I mean, like, I just, I mean, we have a, we have a Popeye's. <laughs> we have a we have a we have a Popeye's uh, pinball machine it's and now happening. a big giant neon apple. Right, that's the headline What's going apple. On? Let's get into some Roto World. Maybe you know what it is. Maybe it is. Maybe you know what it is. You know what it might be. What, what is it? It might be representing. It's a big apple, yeah. and it might be just representing the big apple. Yeah. Giants and Jets both win again yesterday. Massive games. If you're if you live in New York and you're not a Mets fan, you're yes. pretty happy here. Or a Yankees. Fan. Or a, or a Yankees fan. That's that's a good point. Yeah. That's it's a, good a football point. town now. It's a I football was told, town. coming from Australia, that New York is a baseball town. Apparently not. How Apparently shocking is that, town. by the way, that like, whatever, two week, two months ago, if we'd said, like, by the way, yeah. you know, between the Yankees, Mets, uh, the Jets, and Giants, yeah. they're going to be playing meaningful sports uh, at, you know, in, in, the, at the end of, in late October. You know, which of the two teams do you think it will yeah. be? It's going to be right. Zach Wilson and Daniel Jones. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, six and one Giants, five and two Jets, uh, uh, and um, uh, the Mets and Yankees. 
have been eliminated. Unfortunately, though, one of the guys who's not going to be a part of that New York run going forward is Brees Hall. This is and awful. he headlines the notable Week 7 injuries. We'll come back to Brees because that's the big story. But the Sun God gets a concussion. Mike Williams does his ankle. DK Metcalf with a knee injury gets carted off. And then David Njoku with an ankle, which probably not as serious as the other injuries. But I think Brees Hall, here's the story. So, yeah, Mon Ross St. Brown, he's in the concussion protocol. We'll see what he is. Mike Williams, it's worth noting, Chargers on a bye next week, so we have some time there. He's got two weeks to get healthy, and as you mentioned, as we are broadcasting this at, at uh, you know noon Eastern on Monday, we don't have any updates yet on David Njoku or DK Metcalf, but uh, initial reports out of New York after the injury was they feared an ACL tear for Brees Hall, which would mean his season is over. We are obviously hoping for the best. We've not gotten official word yet on that. Maybe news will come here in the hour that we're together, Jay. But uh, let's assume the worst. Um, and this is awful, right? I mean, yeah. Brees Hall, a true star in the making. Um, you know, just on both real life and in fantasy football, nothing short of amazing. I have two sort of takeaways here, and I want your reaction to it. First off, the obvious one is, is that whenever there's a devastating injury like this, it does create opportunity, and opportunity means fantasy success. So Michael Carter, who's available in 34% of Yahoo leagues, suddenly should see an uptick in work, right? He's had six career games where he's gotten 15 or more touches. He's averaging 17.9 fantasy points per game. He's had over 100 yards from scrimmage in four of those six games. So we would expect a big workload here, especially because – they continue to seem like they want to hide this offense. Like yep. the whole Jets offense is Brees Hall. And that's my other concern here is that Brees Hall's a special guy. And yep. like they don't want to throw. They don't want Zach Wilson to throw. Like, you know, like we joked about it on Fantasy Football pregame yesterday morning. Like they're hiding Zach Wilson, not just from neighborhood yes, moms, right? But also from, you know, defenders in yes. the secondary. Like it is a, it is a, conservative, highly conservative, run-centric offense that they got away with because Brees Hall is so good and their defense is playing playing well. Does this entire offense just go in the tank with no Brees Hall, Jay? I think so. And I think, I mean, they looked so bad yesterday outside of Brees. And it's so sad that he has his iconic moment, his best moment of his career. He breaks the massive touchdown run, the Brees lightning run, and then he goes down soon after that. I wouldn't read too much into how much the offense struggled yesterday just because the Denver defense is one of the three or four best in the entire league and also percent. it's just difficult when you pivot your offense mid-game when your superstar goes down so I do think Michael Carter will be more efficient going forward do you think this springs a bit of life maybe into Garrett Wilson uh, into other pass catchers on the Jets just because they're not going to be as brace heavy I think I think it's going to have to right and so maybe Elijah Moore gets out of the doghouse they figure that out uh Denzel Mims and Corey Davis both left this game with minor injuries so we'll see if there's any severity to that as well they play New England next week which you don't well I mean Zach Wilson against Belichick is hashtag night ideal Patriots will be traveling on a short week because they play tonight in that game as well in New York two and a half point favorites the Pats by the which is which is sort of crazy by the way and it goes to my you know Anyway, so we'll, we'll, um, we'll see how tonight plays out for the Patriots as well. But, um, yeah, this is just a – a, it just sucks. You know, there's nothing – it, it sucks for football. It sucks for fantasy football. It sucks for Brees Hall um, and his many fans and family and, and the Jets. And about, we feel terrible. About 10 minutes before the injury, Sportsbooks pulled the offensive rookie of the year market because Brees was so dominant that they pulled it, thinking that it was a foregone conclusion. And then 10 minutes later, he gets injured, uh, which is right. terrible. But let's move on. Uh, I think the other injury is it's largely a wait and see game, but yep. uh, it's no longer really a wait and see game on Tom Brady and the Tampa no, Bay offense, dude. which has just been bad consistently. They put up three points in basically garbage time against the Panthers. They do nothing. Now, this has been largely three weeks of this, where they scored 21 against Atlanta, 18 against Pittsburgh, three against Carolina. What's the alarm, what's the alarm bell looking like on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense? It's got to be pretty high here as we show a tweet from NFL Re- at NFL Research. With his Week 7 loss to the Panthers, Tom Brady has a losing record through his first seven games of a season for the first time since 2002 which, of course, was his first full season as an NFL starting quarterback and the only healthy season of his career in which he did not make the playoffs. Now, the positives are is that he's in the NFC South, which is just, you know, a brutal division. So yes. you can be mediocre and still wind up with the division record here. They play the Thursday night game against the Ravens this week. Here's the positives on Tom Brady. 
He's now thrown 42 or more pass attempts in four of the last five games. Like, the volume is still Doc. there. He still has elite pass catchers around him. We still like Chris Godwin. We still like Mike Evans quite a bit. We still like Leonard Fournette as a running back and a pass catching option out of the backfield. He's actually top eight in red zone pass attempts this season. So those are all the things we like. And I do think that, I mean, Mike Evans, like if you want to see it here, for those of you watching on Peacock, you watch this, but just watch the. I mean, like you're not going to see a more wide open drop than this one right here as Brady goes back to pass from his own 35-yard line. Mike Evans, clear as daylight, and just, oh, 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 boy. Oh, oh boy. Comical. Like, I mean, just like off of it. Like, oh. Mike Evans, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Oh. Like, there's no one around for distance. Like, <laughs> it just, it literally hits him in his hands. It's always worse than like, hit a board and then try to It is a it. perfect pass. It is, he just blows by. The defender is down, and then just oh. right in the bread basket. Like, it's one of those, it's just like, oh, and that would have been a 64 yard touchdown. And yeah. I think, I think, I, and, and they said after the game, like it just the, the sort of ball went, the air went out of the ball after that. The whole Buccaneers team just sort of got deflated. And I think the numbers obviously look different if there's a 64 yard touchdown pass to Tom Brady, who in this game, 49 pass attempts, 290 yards. And again, should have been like almost 350 with a touch, with at least one touchdown. I, and so I think the narrative around him is a little bit different. I, the coming into week seven here, and we'll see what happens tonight, right? But coming into week seven, the Baltimore Ravens were a middle of the pack pass defense. Yep. They played or they played better recently over the last four weeks, but like they're not the defense. They're, they're not the Ravens of old. No, they don't scare you. Um, is Tom Brady a locked in set and forget it QB one anymore? Of course he isn't. I, I mean, like how how could he be right under fifteen fantasy points in five or seven games? You know, but um, I do think again. He's throwing a ton. He still looks like Brady. He's missed a few few more throws than he normally would, but overall he still looks like Tom Brady in terms of the accuracy. Um, he's got a 2.7% touchdown rate, like which is just career low for him. I just I think positive regression is coming for Tom Brady. Yep. They're one and a half point underdogs at home on Bet MGM to the Ravens on Thursday night on the short week. So MGM is buying that there is something wrong with this Bucks team. I will say though though. I don't think the Panthers' defense is that bad. The Panthers might have an above-average defense. It's the offense where there are typically issues, though not really, against the Bucs, because DJ Moore, of all people, he sprung to life. Are you buying the Moore uh, renaissance? Yeah, um, I'm not sure what that word. Renaissance sounds like something Rene you can get at Applebee's. Renaissance like, Gardner? Uh, right, you know, renaissance. <laughs> you know, I think you mean renaissance, but like <laughs> renaissance is like, oh, I need a plate of riblets with some renaissance on the side. See, is what I want to say for. that we say renaissance in Australia, but I don't think we do. I think I just said it right. I think yeah, you did. Renaissance. It's renaissance yeah. is the correct word. Yeah, some um, some renaissance. Oh, <laughs> uh, like, you know, I, can, I, can I get a demi glaze and then renaissance? on the side with my steak here at Applebee's. Um, what I would say about DJ Moore, am I buying the renaissance of him? I guess somewhat, like, you know, I mean, like, look, give credit where credit is due. So you sit here and you see it on your screen, right? Double digit targets against the Buccaneers, but seven targets against the Falcons, eight against the Niners, 11 against the Cardinals. Like the volume has been there. He finally put it all together. A big game here, seven receptions, 69 yards, and a touchdown, 19.6 fantasy points. Give P.J. Walker credit. He played well in this game, right? And so, like, it helped that, uh, you know, um, that uh, Carlton Davis, that, you know, uh, uh, Bunting was out. Like, their, their secondary, the Buccaneers secondary, was really beat up in this game. And so that certainly, that certainly helped P.J. Walker. But they're at Atlanta. Next week, speaking of injured uh, secondaries, the, the Falcons are sort of beat up as well. And so I think he's, as long as he remains a wide receiver with the Panthers, as long as he has P.J. Walker under <laughs> center, and they committed to him, you know, that it's hard to see, you know, Baker or Sam Darnold uh, coming back and taking this job from him anytime soon. Um, my expectation here is that he'll be that wide receiver three. Like, he's still he's still going to be in beer goggles on Sunday morning. Like yeah, you're, he'll be a four. Right, three yeah, four three or week. four beers. Like, you're not going to be like, oh, yeah, 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 I feel, you know, all is forgiven, DJ Moore. Like, but it was positive. 
Yeah. Like the volume was there, and we know the know the talent has never gone away. I think the other thing with DJ Moore is that now the Panthers have three quarterbacks who realistically any of them could be starting four weeks from now in PJ Walker, Baker Mayfield, and Sam Darnold. And the pass game is largely just going to be tied to DJ Moore and how well DJ sure. Moore is doing. And so I think that if someone is bad with DJ Moore, then they're probably out and you cycle the next guy in to help Moore reach his ceiling. Now, the Carolina running backs, uh, it was a bit they of a... Do have, they do have Atlanta twice in the next three weeks. So yep. that, in theory, should help. I mean, we just saw what Cincinnati did to him last week. Yep. So on Sunday. The two Carolina running backs, that was the big one of the big waiver stories between Foreman and Hubbard. Both deliver. Yesterday. Yeah, I mean, I, two running know, they, backs right, they, we thought the answer was neither. It turns yeah, out the answer both. was either. <laughs> yeah. Was uh, right, was, was both. I said, look, I prefer Deontay Foreman to Chuba Hubbard, right? And so Foreman had, you know, had the, had the, had the bigger day, 118 uh, total yards on 15 rushes. He also was involved in the passing game, two for 27. Now, it's worth noting, basically half of his yardage came on one 60-yard yep. run, but he has that big playability. Like, it, it's worth noting, but it's also worth noting, like, that's in his skill set. We've seen that before, and the Panthers know that as well. So they're going to continue to give him opportunities Chuba Hubbard leaves this game with an injury, and after that, he went 11 for 48. So that was somewhat productive. I think it's going to continue to be a committee there. We'll see if Hubbard's injury is serious as well. It's worth noting about Chuba Hubbard, right? Through the first three quarters, he was actually out snapping Ford, Foreman 22 to 14. Um, uh, he was a little bit more involved in the passing game here, but truly was kind of like basically split down the middle. And I still prefer Foreman just because I think week in, week out, he's going to have a better chance at a touchdown. He's a bigger back. He's a more bruising back. I think Hubbard, they're both involved in the passing game, but Foreman is somebody that I think will um, have more of, the, uh, more of the carries in close. It's uh, like we said, they play Atlanta next week. Yep. Falcons are decent against the run, but... Not terrifying. Not terrifying. Yep. Hubbard was named the starter, but I don't think that really matters. Like it didn't really matter... Uh, with Kansas City, who named Isaiah Pacheco the starter. but the, the You know what? And they didn't, though. I, I, I want to say this, because for people that missed fantasy football pregame on Sunday morning, we got a report that NFL Network was saying Isaiah Pacheco was the starter. And I didn't see the exact report. So if I'm mishandling, maybe they said he was getting first-team reps. I don't know. But what I, what I said on, on, on fantasy football pregame, and I will say there, is that you have to, you have to take those reports with a grain of salt. Um, and uh, specifically those, oh, this player is starting. Like, yep. Take it all with a grain of salt. What we said on pregame what turned out to be right, which is we said, hey, we're still ranking CEH highest. This is still going to be a running back by committee that plays the hot hand. And the truth of the matter is that actually Jarek McKinnon, Jarek McKinnon is the guy that played the most snap. Isaiah Pacheco played only 30% of snaps, and honestly, most of that came in the fourth quarter when they, the game was out of hand, and it was just sort of in clock-killing mode. Clyde edwards Elayer plays 17 snaps. Pacheco, 19 snaps. As we talked about, McKinnon, 28 snaps. He leads the team as they went uh, sort of pass-heavy here. CEH gets to the touchdown. But ultimately, Jay, this is going to be a running back by committee where they play the hot hand. And I think ideally you don't want any of them. They're on a bye next week. Yeah. Last year, no Chiefs running back had more than 150 targets or 600 rushing yards. I feel like we're in for that again. Uh, but Mikael Hardman, he was the story. Three touchdowns. We thought that this Chiefs pass catching group was going to be a nightmare. Uh, it was, I mean, it's proving to be a nightmare week on, week out. But at the same time, if Juju is producing and if Mikael wants to get his touchdowns on top of it, it may not matter. But are you buying Mikael Hardman going forward? Absolutely not. Okay. Sorry, Mikael. You're out. I mean, just... He got three touchdowns on six touches. Yeah. Four receptions for 32 yards, two rushes for 28 yards, three touchdowns, one receiving, two rushing. Like six touch. He got three touches, three touchdowns on six touches. Yep. Like that's the Chiefs for you, right? You know, have yourself a day, Miko Hardman, but can't imagine that ever repeating or ever starting him. Like I just, you know, if sell high if you can uh, kind of thing here. But like he just – I, you know, I, I don't know. Like, are you buying it no. in any way, shape, or form? I'm not, but I might be buying Juju Smith-Schuster, certainly more than last week, where last week seemed unsustainable. He had the big game. He had four targets. Michael Hardman had four targets. Yep. I wouldn't be in, rushing in, to in a game in, in a game in which um, Patrick Mahomes threw the ball 34 times. Yep. He had four targets. Yeah. No, I don't don't buy Michael Hardman, but I do buy Juju Smith-Schuster being a potentially – low-end wide receiver two, high-end flex with what he's shown the past two weeks. Now, we thought last week was probably unsustainable with just the five targets. Gets eight targets this week. 
uh, and goes 124 yards and a touchdown. It's now five of seven games where he's had eight targets. Yeah, I mean, he had that 45-yard touchdown, which was great. I mean, like just in a little bit of busted coverage, a great play by Juju. And so what's nice is that we're seeing the average depth of target become a little bit longer here for Juju. They're taking a little bit more shots downfield. You know, he, he had the, um, he had the uh, eight targets on this one that, that was tied for the most uh, with Kelsey. That's encouraging, right? So seven for 124, great. Eight targets, super encouraging as well. Um, the other thing here is that he's now had back-to-back games with 100 yards and a touchdown. And yep. so interesting. They're on a bye next week. So not super interesting. <laughs> But don't mind, like, if, if, he, if you're going through waivers and, like, it's only the Chargers and Chiefs on waivers this week. And so if you're like, you know what, I'm good, and I'm just trying to fortify for sort of the stretch run, it, it feels like he's starting to become the juju that we, he thought, we thought he would become in the preseason, which is if you're starting a pass catcher on the Chiefs not named Travis Kelsey, who is it? We still think it's Juju, Juju Smith-Schuster. And so if he was dropped in your league, he probably won't be a heavy pickup this week because they're on a bye. Maybe a guy to uh, grab and stash. Yep. Let's quickly just touch on Christian McCaffrey. I feel like we have to. Who's the big story of last week. He gets eight carries, which is more than, honestly, I expected. I know our friend Michael Smith thought he was going to uh, just be Christian McCaffrey again. But he did get a decent workload. He looked great when he was out there. Uh, but I think it's just it's largely just as expected. Yeah, 20, oh, 22 snaps here. But of the running back rushing share, 47%. They were a negative game script for much of this game, and that's not going to be the case for most of the 49ers games. They're going to be they're going to be winning or close in most games. They play the Rams next week. I I think if you have Chris McCaffrey on your roster, you wish you had a better box score from from Sunday, but I think you you should be thrilled. Yep. You should be thrilled because he's going to have a really big. You know, he's got a chance to be Ken Walker down the stretch. <laughs> yeah, like, that's how feel. good. Let's not get crazy that's, now. Let's that's not how get good crazy. Christian McCaffrey in front of the big apple or could be. Like, oh, uh, yeah. You know what we should do is, <laughs> you know what we, we should do is um, we should we should paint, like, eyes, <laughs> like sort of menacing eyes. <laughs> on Right? Exactly. It's supposed to be terrifying. Yeah. So it's just it's sort of always looking over me. Like, if I have a bad take or if I go a little bit too far, yeah. you can just we can just cut to the we'll apple. To the eye. And it's just kind of like, you know, like. Okay, well. It'd be great if we actually, we don't have the budget for this, but it'd be great if we actually had <laughs> animated eyes. If, you know, like, and like, just like, so like, if we said like, like, you know, we said a surprising stat, you know, that kind of thing. Like, you know, Tom Brady has the, you know, losing record for the first time since 2002. And then you cut to the apple and it's like, a whoop, you know, with the eyebrows raised and like, you know, big bug eyes or like, you know, All right. Right, right. Then I start making fun of like, like you and like, then it gets like, you know, the, the eyes go to like little slits, like angry eyes, you know, and that kind of stuff. Right. All right. This is, that's ridiculous. Do you, ever, you, you, have, you have young kids. You've seen, you've seen Toy Story, right? Yeah, I've seen You ever Toy see Story. like the Mr. Potato Head, yeah, the Mr. Potato Head yeah, character? Like, where are my angry eyes? Yeah. Get my angry eyes. Yeah. That's what we need for the apple. Yeah. Like just different, right. different eyes and, you know, well, expressions. Let's cut to some, some happy eyes from uh, okay. Gus Edwards, who led the Ravens back field yesterday yes it was tough it was up and down up and down um uh i wanted to be back i wanted to be back game one but it, it doesn't always work like that i was on god's timing um and it's a lot of season left um like i said i'm even fortunate to be playing right now with the type of injury i had and i just gotta keep building off of it so was it more than just an acl yeah, it was ACL, hamstring, LCL. How do you feel physically coming out of this one, Gus? I feel good, but I'm about to go get back in the tubs, though, and make sure. <laughs> Gus Edwards, 16 carries yesterday uh, for 66 yards, two touchdowns. The Ravens ran the ball 44 times. Uh, they were treating Lamar Jackson like Zach Wilson, which I think bodes well if you're a Gus Edwards owner, because like, he's clearly the guy that you want in Baltimore's backfield. I, I mean, he got more work in this game than I think J.K. Dobbins has gotten in his entire career. Yeah. More work than J.K. Like Dobbins has ever gotten. He got 36 and a half to the Baltimore running back snap share in this one. And by the way, to the eye, looked like Gus Edwards. Yeah, looked looked like the Gus Boss, you know, north-south runner. It's his first game since week 16 of the 2020 season. Played 23 snaps in this. Got the, got the bunny touchdown, right? I mean, his longest run was 12 yards. But that's what... That's what we think. He's going to grind it out. Like, and he clearly played ahead of Kenyon Drake, who's coming off of the big game, right? I mean, Kenyon Drake, 11 rushes for five yards. I mean, so yeah, it is. Right. We, and you think about the fact that 
Dobbins is out four to six weeks here. He is going to be the leader of this backfield as well. They play, as we mentioned, they play the Buccaneers on Thursday night. So maybe still you'll see some Justice Hill and Kenyon Drake because on the short week coming off the injury, they may not want to give him another full workload. And the two touchdowns, again, they got close, and some of those will be vultured by Lamar Jackson. Uh, but, yeah, if you manage to grab Gus Edwards, we, we, we've talked about him quite a bit. Um, I think – I think, hey, you just lucked into a RB2 yep. the rest of the way. More value in non-PPR than PPR. He got just one target, didn't come down with it. And this one, he's not going to be involved in the passing game here. But we said this. We, this was a question we got asked on Fantasy Football pregame. And just a reminder to people to jo- join us on Sunday, we answer your questions a ton. We got a question. What am I doing with the Ravens backfield? And I said, I prefer Gus Edwards. Uh, you know, to any of these guys, because I think he's got the best shot at a touchdown. Wound up with two in this one. Curious, curious, um, you know, for a game in which the Ravens won, yeah. Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews were two of the bigger busts in this one. Unsighted. Yeah, I just, you know what, I think, look, Rashad Bateman got down at the one-yard line. That would have been a touchdown pass for Lamar Jackson, some, some sort of bad luck there. Mark Andrews only got two targets in this one. What One was a, uh, a pass into the end zone, which he could have come down with. That's a touchdown. I'm willing to just say just bad day at the office for these two guys. Andrew was on the Andrews was on the injury report this week, Jay, and, yep. and that may have affected things. Yeah, I think so. I mean, and also, what are you going to do? Like, you got to start Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, uh, and I think you can just write that off. They have enough of a resume. Uh, one yeah, I mean, it's worth noting, Lamar Jackson passed 16 times. Like, yeah. there were only 16 pass attempts in weird. this game. Like, so, yeah, the whole thing was weird, but they, you know, home game against a tough Browns defense, and they grinded out a win. Yep. Good for the Ravens. They did. One team that uh, didn't really need to grind it out was Cincinnati, and here's Jamar Chase and T. Higgins talking about the big day for the wide receivers. How aware were you guys how close you were to having three receivers of 100 yards? Oh, we're super aware. I mean, T went out of bounds. Good job, T. <laughs> All T fault. I know you couldn't hear it. Jamar looked over and said, good job, T, for going out of bounds when you had a chance to get... <laughs> All three wide receivers with 100 yards. Your thoughts? Man, first of all, <laughs> I started cramping. <laughs> so there was no point in me even trying to run. And then they, I got robbed. They said I was out of it. I didn't catch it when I did, but it's all right. How are you guys aware of that? Who tells you those numbers? You can see it on the board at the top. Yeah, so. Would that have been cool? All three? It would have been cool. We, we always talk about it, you know, man. Um, that's something we, we want to we accomplish. And I think today was the closest we ever got. And... So we know we can get it. So, I mean, we just got to keep it going and try another game. There you go. Talking about that, uh, the, the first voice you heard was Jamar Chase. Second voice, T. Higgins, talking about the fact that they want to get all three wide receivers along with Tyler Boyd to each have a 100-yard game. They were giving T. a little bit of crap. You should have seen T. I wish for people listening at home, you should have seen T.'s facial expression. They just, <laughs> he so rolled blank. his eyes. So good. Again, that would have been good if we had the apple. If we had the eyes on the apple, the apple yes. also could have rolled could his have eyes here. His the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, is like they had awesome games. Um, I, Jamar Chase and T. Higgins are locked in as wide receiver ones. Joe Burrow, just a monster game for him. 481s, three touchdowns. He also runs for one as well. Just monster games, and they play at Cleveland next week on the Monday night game. I guess for me, the only question out of this game is like, great, they're doing what you drafted them to be. They're, they're fantasy superstars. Is Tyler Boyd, eight for 155 and a touchdown, second most routes against the Bengals wide receivers. He ran a route on over 80% of his snaps. We buying this for Tyler Boyd, or how much do you think, is this just like, hey, they were killing the Falcons. He had the one big play as well. Can you count on Tyler Boyd, Jay, moving forward? I mean, the previous five weeks didn't have more than six targets in a game. You're not going to get as kind matchups as Atlanta most weeks. And I still think we are going to ultimately see some regression back to Zach Taylor just running Joe Mixon a million times because that's what he wants to do deep down in his heart. But look, they have huge upside. This is the second time Tyler Boyd has broken 100 yards. Like, I think you can definitely do worse in your flex spots week to week, but I don't think he's going to sniff being a wide receiver too. Yeah, I mean, like, he had the 60-yard touchdown to, to jump it off. But then, you know, so you're like, okay, so, you know, one big play, whatever. But guy still had almost 100 yards after that. He had, you know, he had seven for 100 after that 60-yard touchdown. So just a monster day at the office for Tyler Boyd. Don't mind him in deeper leagues, but I agree with you. I think he is still, on a week-to-week basis, more of a risky wide receiver for 
wide receiver three, somewhere yep. in that range, where there's some upside. But again, we haven't seen the consistent production. Remember, uh, four out of the seven games this year, he's been under 50 yards receiving. There's more variance with Tyler Boyd than there is with Higgins or Chase. Yep. All right, let's go to the other side. Uh, Kyle Pitts and Drake London. Now, here's the way I look at this, Matthew. I need angry eyes, Apple. <laughs> Do you, you know the film Drive with Ryan Gosling? So the protagonist, Ryan Gosling's no, protagonist basically just doesn't. Yeah, you he, can he ruin just, this one for me. I'm no, not, no, I'm not going to see it. The protagonist just doesn't speak. Gosling, he barely ever talks, but it kind of works and it's in the flow. Drive? Drive, no. Yeah. So I've never, I don't think I've seen any Ryan Gosling movie. Wow. So well, like, I thought you're denying yourself. He's a good actor. Anyway, I, I'm he sure barely ever lovely, speaks, but, but it just, works. And then the is next he a superhero? Film, then I'm not seeing it. Okay, there you go. The next film that he does with this director, Nicholas Winning Refn, is called Only God Forgives, which is terrible. And in that film, he just doesn't speak at all. Got but it. it's like he's having a contest not to ever speak. It's not actually in the flow of do anything. You, do you th if he's such a good actor, why doesn't he talk? Maybe, maybe, maybe he's he the talks, Zach Wilson he talks of movies. With his eyes. He talks maybe, with his eyes. maybe he's the Zach Wilson of movies, where they're just trying to hide him. I don't maybe think they're just. Uh, is that no what one's it trying is? to hide Ryan Gosling. But here's my thing with Arthur Smith. Yes, sir. First six weeks, it's like the Gosling and Drive, not talking, but it's working. This week. Not talking, not throwing the ball, just for the sake of it, as if he's doing a bit. Marcus Mariota just never throws the ball, despite the fact that they're down multiple touchdowns the whole game, which makes me think maybe there is no hope for Kyle Pitts or Drake. They trailed 21 nothing after the first quarter, and on the 45 um, total plays that were called, they had 16 dropbacks. They were down three touchdowns. Yep. And still, and still, Marcus Mariota had 13 pass attempts in this game. Damn, Arthur Smith is going to establish the run, <laughs> damn it. He's going to establish it. Oh, I don't care. Like, what? I, I mean, it's – Drake – listen, here's the thing. So, Kyle Pitts, you probably – I'm not dropping him because it's, the talent is massive it and out. it's so brutal at, at tight end. But he's no longer a, you know, a must start. I think it depends on the matchup, by the way. And you don't love the matchup with the suddenly red-hot Carolina Panthers defense uh, coming up next week. I think Drake London is welcome to Dumpsville. We, because the argument yeah. for Drake, look, yeah, I have to. there's no question about his talent. We're not questioning his talent. But the argument for Drake is, even though off the last week, it's, well, he's still getting volume. He had one reception for nine yards in this game. I mean, like, yep. uh, he had, I think, two targets. Let me check. He had one target. He had one target. One target. They're throwing it 13 times a game. And, like, they got their asses <laughs> kicked here. No, it's like, it's not like it, it, you know, before we kept talking about the fact that, like, hey, they, you know, they 6-0 they and o against covering the spread. Well, now they're 6-1, and one, no, right? I mean, they got, they got destroyed by the Bengals in this game and yet still down big. And they still wouldn't let Marcus Mariota throw his lowest target share of the season, 9%. I mean, maybe they go back to the drawing board. But I, I, I don't know. Okay. I, 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 like – if, if I saw Drake, let me put it this way, and then we can move on. If I saw Drake London on my waiver wire and anything other than, like, the deepest of leagues, I'm ignoring him. Yep. No, I think that's fair. All right, quickly, before we go to break, let's talk Aaron Rodgers, who, again, just did nothing. Yeah, he ran into the buzzsaw that is the Commanders. Hail the Commanders. Hail victory. <laughs> yeah, the Commanders. Unbelievable. If I had a Taylor Heineke jersey, I would wear it. I need you a Taylor Heineke jersey. Because it's Taylor Heineke. But he's, he, Stop he, it. He looked like the better quarterback at times against Aaron Rodgers. He's 1-0. I'd rather be. I'd rather have Geno Smith going forward than Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I'd rather have Derek Carr than Eric. Uh, well, Derek Carr and Rodgers are pretty close. Kirk Cousins. Rather have him than Aaron Rodgers. I, I think you could make an argument. I'm not saying this, but I think you could make an argument that you'd rather have Taylor Heineke yeah. for the next four or yeah. five weeks. Because yeah. listen, it won't be pretty with Heineke, but he runs around a little bit. They're going to have to force the ball. I don't know what's going on. Think about this, Aaron Rodgers next week. At Buffalo, yeah. just like us. Yeah. Like, we're all the, – so Fantasy Football pregame will be live in Buffalo. If you are in the Buffalo area, come on out and hang out with us in the parking lot of Bills Stadium Sunday morning as we'll do Fantasy Football pregame. And then that night, of course, Packers at Bills, Sunday Night Football right here on NBC and Peacock. I'm a company man. But look at their upcoming schedule. At Buffalo, at Detroit, home to Dallas versus Tennessee. The only one you feel good about is at Detroit. Yep. Like, you know, and again, like – this should have been a good matchup for him against the Commanders. There are no good matchups for Aaron Rodgers right now and that passing offense. It's just a complete mess. And he is an 11.5 point underdog to Buffalo next week. We're going to go I to just, break. When we come back, weekend Warriors. We won't be 11.5 yeah. point we'll underdogs. Talk more, Buffalo, we'll Matthew. talk a little bit more about it. I'm nervous about A.J. Dillon. I'm nervous about everyone except for Aaron Jones. Two but when you free Aaron Jones, that's what happens. You get two scores. You see that, Matt LaFleur? I will tell you this, one source told me about Kenneth Walker in Seattle, is that the Seahawks staff think he can be, this is, again, this is not my words, 
Ladanian Tomlinson. Wow. Not my words. I'm just telling you, this is this is a source I trust who told me, like, just the point is, is they are very, and I very, with a capital V, very excited about Kenneth Walker in Seattle. Wow. Well, Ladanian Tomlinson should be flattered by that comparison I, to Kenneth Walker. At this Walker. point, yeah. I mean, like, again, by the way, that was, that clip from Fantasy Football pregame was week four. Remember, Rashad Penny got injured in week five. Yep. So at that point, and we talked about that, that, that segment came up as part of a kind of a sneaky pickups, guys to grab before they're valuable uh, segment. And so we were talking up Kenneth Walker. If you don't have Kenneth Walker on your roster, you have no one to blame <laughs> but yourself because we laid it out there for you. I mean, again, when they're saying we think we've got this kid that could be Ladanian Tomlinson or that's who we comp yeah. him to, that should raise your eyes that, if nothing else, they're going to give him an opportunity. And, man, have they given KW3 an opportunity here as well. I mean, he's gotten 82% of the team's running back touches, Jay, um, uh, since he's become the starter for Seattle. 23 for 168 and two touchdowns. Three straight games with 85 or more rushing yards and a score. And then I think, as you see it here on your screen, just, you know, just what a monster game he was. But this was... I thought this was pretty cool. According to our friends over at Next Gen Stats, he ran 22 miles an hour. That's fast. On, his, on that 74-yard touchdown run. That was the fastest of any ball carrier this entire season. The dude ran 22 miles an hour. I Sometimes I'm scared to drive 22 <laughs> miles an hour. Right? Right. There we go. I mean, here's so the run, as you can see if you're watching on Peacock or on YouTube later. Just And here's the burst. I mean, I think you just have to treat him like he's Nick Chubb going forward, yeah. except he doesn't have Kareem Hunt stealing touches off him. I mean, he's going to be a top 10 running back going forward. He, he, and I mean, uh, he's now the favorite for Offensive Rookie of the Year. As as well he should be. I mean, he's, you know, he's just, he's awesomeness, right? I mean, like, yeah, I mean, locked in RB1, like uh, upcoming schedule, home to the Giants at Arizona, uh, plays Tampa Bay in the London game, and then a bye. So, not, I mean, again, you, you normally you'd be like, ah, Tampa Bay, you don't love that. But then Deontay Foreman and Chuba Hubbard just ran all over him. So you feel pretty good <laughs> about KW3 scary. there. So anyway, three straight games here. I would actually, and you may not be able to after that game, after the two touchdown game. But if you could, I would buy high on KW3. You tried Nick Chubb for him? Yes. Yep. And a hot bait. Wow. Yeah, Nick I mean, Chubb. I think I think the only running backs I would not – the only, off the top of my head, the only running backs that I would rather have the rest of the way than Ken Walker the third, Barkley, Eckler, McCaffrey. Jacobs. I'd rather have Jacobs. Jacobs, just the Jacobs game. is fair. Jacobs is fair. Yeah, but he's probably five. He he's might probably be actually five. five. I mean, like, right? I mean, yeah. like, he's right there. Like, I, I mean, he's right there in the, you know, I'd rather have him than Joe Mixon. Yep. I'd rather have him than Nick Chubb. Yeah, I mean, like. Right. Let's touch on Marquise Ooh, Goodwin, who also yeah. was a big part of that offense yesterday. Four receptions, 67 yards, two touchdowns, and looked amazing out there as well some of those catches uh i assume that he is one of the best wide receiver waiver wide pickups this week well i think we'll know more about marquise goodwin when we find out about dk metcalf if dk metcalf is fine if hopefully we'll get some update on him uh before we hit waivers tomorrow night if dk metcalf were to miss time then yes marquise goodwin who's had you know pockets of success here and there you know 49ers come to mind as 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 uh the most obvious but other than that no if dk metcalf's fine then no i think it's just again metcalf left this game with an injury got a little bit banged up and so uh he had a connection there with geno smith yep i think the seahawks are going to win that division they're plus 550 Let's go to Josh I like Jacobs. That, I now. like that call. Let's go like to Josh Jacobs, call. who was on your love list last week, uh, and he vindicated it. Just an absurd stat line: 143 yards, three touchdowns, a little bit of work in the receiving game as well. Now, I think he's going to end the season as the number one back in fantasy. I think that's in play. They've got a really easy schedule coming up, and he's playing as well as anyone. He might be. I still think Saquon. You know, we've talked about Brian Robinson. I, I mean, there, Geno Smith as well. I think there are people that I would prefer as, as favorites for comeback player of the year. Yep. But Josh Jacobs, I bet you, is in the others receiving votes. Definitely. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. he's going to get votes for that award, as you see. Like, it, we always talk about how the fact how running backs come into the league and and uh, and sort of, you know, for those somewhere Denny Carter is smiling, the zero RB truthers. But if, if you saw there just uh, on, the, on the show, we showed kind of the week seven running back leaders and some of the names that were on there, Raheem Mostert. Travis Etienne, Eno Benjamin. We're going to talk Ken through Walker. Ken Walker. I mean, yeah. these are all, 
guys that either went late in your draft, middle of your draft. Um, you know, there were there were some guys. You know, there was the the Ecklers and the Nick Chubbs. There were guys that went early-ish. Although Chubb and Jacobs both were, you know, uh, had lower ADPs than typically. So, uh, anyway, uh, it's it's Josh Jacobs' world. Um, I like I, I I tweeted this out. I had him on my list, love list, and I had him as running back four this week. And I think I was too low on. Yeah, him. yeah. I mean, just He's... just a monster game for him. Only six players have an 80% running back share. Um, and Josh Jacobs, obviously, is one of them. By the way, he's also averaging a 17% target share over the last four games. So the only guy the only guy in the NFL with over an 80% rush share and a 17% target share is Saquon Barkley. His average run, running back rush share over the last four is 90%. I just, I don't know, just massive, insane usage. Saints, Jags, Colts, Broncos are the next four. You don't love any of that, but the usage is so massive it yep. doesn't matter. Yep, right as it coming. All right, Paris Campbell, uh, who Dude. is all of a sudden highly relevant, getting Cooper Cup type of usage the past two weeks. 21 he has to targets be up the everywhere. last two. 21 t targets the last two weeks. You know, this is somebody who came into the league as a highly touted prospect out of Ohio State. Injuries have just derailed his career time and time again. Obviously, Ashton Doolin being on IR helps his playing time as well, but now. He's playing 99% of the snaps, right? Yeah. And he's playing in the slot. And so while the average of the target isn't that, that great, when you think about the sack machine that is Matt Ryan, yeah. it sort of makes sense that they're just trying to get the ball out quickly to, from Matt Ryan to Paris Campbell, who's become a bit of a safety valve here for, uh, for Matt Ryan. So, yeah, we'll talk about him more tomorrow on the waiver Wire Show. But um, Commanders, Patriots, Vegas, um, and then the Eagles. You don't love the Eagles matchup. You don't love the Patriots. But – Again, you know, again, with the idea of he's just sort of a safety valve here, Paris Campbell uh, suddenly becomes pretty interesting. His success has come at the uh, uh, at the detriment to Alec Pierce. Yep. Who, Paris um, Campbell's the guy you want over yep. Pierce. All right, Daniel Jones, uh, who was one of the best performing fantasy quarterbacks of the week, number two behind only Joe Burrow, who had an absurd game. And Jones, he's, he's adding the value with his legs, where he's going to break his career uh, single-season record in yardage maybe in the next two weeks, uh, and that's where the value is coming from. Over 100 yards rushing in this game on 11 rushes and a touchdown. He now has three games with 60 or more rushing yards this season. My love-hate this earlier this week, I did blind resumes, and I compared two players and their rushing totals, and one was Najee Harris, and one was Daniel Jones, just his rushing. Yeah. And Daniel Jones compares favorably, honestly, and now he's blown by him after week seven as well and so it's interesting right i mean like we just showed a, a graphic for those listening at home of the top seven of the court of the week seven quarterback leaders in fantasy only four players over 20 yards over 20 fantasy points i should say mahomes and burrow okay great yeah and then andy dalton he had the great the red rifle, rifle yeah. the red rifle yes. and uh and daniel jones who um uh on a per game basis this year is quarterback nine in <laughs> fantasy points per game, right? I mean, is that, you know, like obviously this week, monster game, almost 30 fantasy points, but like <laughs> he's averaging 17 points per game at Seattle, a bye, home to Houston, home to Detroit. I, I think he is absolutely a viable streamer, Daniel Jones, because they are making an effort to get him on the move. I think I'd rather have Daniel Jones and Aaron Rodgers going forward in fantasy, or at least it's close. I don't, right. that is, that's not a crazy talk and take, take. And Wando Robinson, nice game as well. Yep. They're adding weapons for him in the passing game. Okay, Ezekiel Elliott, who's started to look more explosive the past two weeks, gets the two touchdowns. He had an injury scare, but he came back in. And I think that Zeke is definitely trending up. Yeah, obviously. Look, good matchup with Detroit, but the fact that Matt and Tony Pollard also had a nice game, but when they get in close, they're going to give it to Ezekiel Elliott, and now that Dak Prescott's under center, they're going to get in close, right? I mean, like, there was, uh, you know, th there was a guy down at the one on this one and, and this one as well, so they got a couple, Zeke got a couple of lucky opportunities that I don't think he ever would, but yeah, he's now had 15 or more rushes in five of his last six games, at least 75 yards from scrimmage, and four of his past uh, past five as well. And so, again, we wish there was passing game usage. There isn't been. But is Ezekiel Elliott a very useful RB2 this year? 100%. Because that offense is going to be in scoring position often with Dak Prescott under center. The rest of the Cowboys, I just... Again, like Noah Brown had a bad fumble at the five-yard line as well. Um, uh, you know, there was just a couple of weird, fluky plays. Detroit sort of played plucky. I thought they uh, – Dallas is going to be just fine. You know what I mean? The, the, 
the, it, it was like 10 nothing. like I think through the first three quarters or something like that. Um, uh, just some, some weird fluky plays down in the red zone. But with Dak back, it should be very good, smooth sailing for the Cowboys offense moving forward. Um, they play Chicago at home next week. Yep, we'll talk about Dak Prescott and Michael Gallup after the break when we talk Sunday scaries. Oh, that makes sense. Because they were scary and yes. yesterday was Sunday. Scary bad. Right. Download the Roto World app, Matthew Berry, to receive breaking player news Already all have. season long. Stay ahead of the competition by favoriting players on your roster. Hey and get the latest injury updates, player news, plus much more delivered right to your phone. It's available in the App Store today. And it's free. And it's free. And it's free. It's very, very we free. We like free. We love free. We like free. free around here. All right, let's talk about things well. we don't love. Sunday scaries. We talked about Ezekiel Elliott, his big game. Not so good for Dak Prescott in his first game back or Michael Gallup. Yeah, I mean, again, they didn't need to go crazy pass heavy in this one because they dominated the game. Ultimately, 24 to 6 is, is the win here. Dalton Schultz, they, they threw in a Dalton Schultz pass interference call, get down you know, to now ball on the one yard line. Zeke punches that in as well. I mentioned in the last segment, Noah Brown fumbles at the five yard line. So I think this game easily could have been better. Dak Prescott threw 25 times, which you're hoping for a bigger volume there, but I, I don't know. I, I'd actually be buying low. He was 19 of 25 on two and two on you know for 207 yards for his first game back. I thought he looked fine. Gallup is a little bit of a concern here. Um, the fact that Noah Brown got seven targets, five for 50 for him. Um, nice to see Dalton Schultz back again, 549 on five targets. Ultimately, as I said, should have had a touchdown there. Yep. And Ceedee Lamb was Ceedee Lamb. Um, yeah, I'm. I, Gallup, I think, is a little more of a wait and see. I mean, he ran the third most routes of the uh, Cowboys wide receivers. He played under 70% of the offensive snaps. Those, so those, those two things are a little concerning to me. So maybe a more of a wait and see approach with Gallup. But Dak Prescott should be fine, especially at home against the Bears next week. Yep. Let's see what Gallup does in a game where Dak Prescott throws it more than 25 times before we get too nervous. Right. All right, let's move on to Derek Carr, who also didn't do much. At the same time, he still had 240 yards, 241 yards, and a touchdown. So not the worst game, no picks, but it just hasn't been the explosive passing game that people would have thought. It's been the Josh Jacobs show. Yeah, he's had only one game with over 300 passing yards this entire year. He's been under 200. 60 yards in four out of six games. It has been all Josh Jacobs on the road at New Orleans next week. He's going to be a mid to high tier QB too. I mean, on the season, he's the 15th best quarterback on a points per game basis, which is about where he was drafted. I yep. think I had him at QB 14 in the preseason. So it's kind of what we expected here. Again, there's no there's no rushing volume with Derek Carr the way there is with the Josh Allen's, Lamar Jackson's, Kyler Murray's, Daniel Joneses of the world. <laughs> Jay Croucher, so, you know, you really need that volume there. And because their run game is playing so well and just Jacobs is getting this massive volume, it's hurting Derek Carr and, to a lesser extent, Devonta Adams, although he'll be fine. Worth noting in this game, again, uh, Darren Waller was out. Yep. Um, so, uh, you know, Darren Waller was out, and um, uh, I feel like there was somebody else that was uh, banged up. Renfro Hunter Renfro was, was, no, Renfro was played, there, but, but he, was played, he, he wasn't 100%. Matt Collins got the touchdown pass. I like Matt Collins. Yeah, I like Matt Collins too. And yeah. I think the Raiders are going to go on a little run. Their schedule the rest of the way is fairly easy. There's a good chance they won't be more than a field goal underdog in any game the rest of the way. At Saints, at Jags, home to the Colts, at Denver yep. are the next four. Good for little stretch. Vegas. Okay. Now, let's talk about my Swaguars, yeah. uh, who are now officially only your Swaguars because I'm completely off them. Uh, right. James Robinson. Are you on the Jets now, or are you getting off the Jets back to the Brees Hall? Actually, I've got a new team. Oh, that? Oh, boy. Se Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks. You're not, you're yeah. Not, yeah, I'm you a Seahawks, Seahawks man. Yeah, I'm the 12th you will, man. You're, part of the, you're yeah. the 12th man. My 12th team. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, but uh, James right. Robinson, uh, complete disaster. It's Commanders seen. have won two in a row, by the way. Just yeah, saying. No, I can't get that. It's worth I'm just saying. We won two in a row. Talk to me at 7-5. and All right, that's fine. We got the Colts this week. We beat the Colts. The Jags are now two and five, yes, and uh, James Robinson saw basically no action. It seemed like he was a little bit banged up. We don't really know what's going on there, but it was the Travis Etienne show. And I th is James Robinson now just Dontrell Hilliard? He's just waiting for an injury? Yeah, maybe, I mean, he certainly you're not dropping him as well, but it was he played just 11 total snaps. Doug Peterson after the game saying about James Robinson, quote, yeah, something we have to evaluate him and see where he is at physically health-wise and all of that, which sort of hints at the fact that maybe he was just a little bit nicked up. The fact is, is that James Robinson is, he's a thumper. 
right? I mean, that's, that's what you need him for. He's always been more of a volume play, but with under 55 total yards in four straight games. And to the eye test, Travis Etienne is just so explosive. Yes. Like, that all is legit Etienne as well. I think for Robinson, not, uh, I'm not dropping him, but I'm also not playing him next week against Denver. That is the London game. Yep. I think Travis Etienne cost himself another touchdown with the fumble in the in the red zone. So I think that Etienne has a good chance to be a top 10 running back going forward. I don't think Cortland Sutton's going to be a top 10 wide receiver going forward, which was perhaps an upside case for him in the preseason if everything broke right. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's, he had Brit, Brett Rippon as his quarterback. Uh, and Brett, he, he tried to take him on, tried to take on Source Gardner uh, at the death. But... Uh, as Omar Little on the wire said, if you come at the source, you best not miss. And uh, Brett Rippon, he missed. And Cortland Sutton, who now was thought to have a real big quarterback upgrade in the offseason, now kind of longs for Teddy Bridgewater. Omar, one of the top 10 characters in TV history. I go top five. I really? go top five. Yeah, top five. Not? That's interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that'd be an interesting debate. Anyway, uh, we all love Omar. Um, uh, I'm surprised you haven't uh, spoiled Omar's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, what, uh, yeah, let's move on quickly. It's yeah, a let's move on allowed. quickly. And I'll just say that we have to. We're, we're running behind on time. Um, Jerry Judy had a nice game in this one as well. I don't think there's much you can take away with it. Again, as you mentioned, Brett Rippon got the start here. They play the Swagwars, my Swagwars, <laughs> swag uh, next year. Like again, he got the same number of targets as Greg Dulcich. You know, like again. When Russell Wilson's back under center and the expectation is, is that Wilson will start for the Broncos next week against Jacksonville. I, I'm, I'm chalking it up to just um, tough, tough matchup with, uh, with the Jets and Sauce Gardner and weird game environment as well. I'm still not trusting Jerry Judy. No. By the way, off of, after this game. No. Is there any Bronco that you're starting outside of Cortland Sutton in London? No. And, I mean, and certainly... I mean, I guess if you're if you're tight and desperate, because I mean, next week uh, it will be Gerald Everett and Travis Kelsey on a bye, and we'll see Great, about Everett. Njoku um, and his health. So you might need a tight end, uh, but you know, so I think he's interesting. But it just all feels bleh. The Jags have a good defense. The Jags do have a a, a solid defense here. London games are always weird. And it's a three-headed committee at running back. Like Latavius Murray bailed you out with a touchdown, but like Melvin Gordon played more snaps, got more uh, work, and then, you know, Mike Boone was in the mix as well. So it's just all like that. Yeah. Like Denver, you're just. Bleh. It's a big. It's a big mess. You're not, you're not excited about any of them. Sutton, no. You downgrade Sutton to like a you know, wide receiver two three sort of on that yep. cusp, and Dulcis is a you know touchdown dependent mid tier tight end too. Yep. Blake, Blake times in Denver, but Sauce Let's Gardner's going to make a lot of people look bad. All right, when we come back, last call, some props between the Bears and the Patriots from our friends at BetMGM. The action never stops at BetMGM. Sign up now using bonus code BERRY and your first wager is risk-free up to $1,000. Simply download the BetMGM app today or go to BetMGM.com and enter bonus code BERRY B-E-R-R-Y to make your first wager risk-free up to $1,000. It's risk-free, Matthew. There is no risk. That's exciting. Let's have a look at the most bet props uh, at BetMGM for tonight's game between the Bears and the Patriots. It's Ramondre Stevenson, who we're going to be talking about to score first touchdown. That's plus 400. The great Jacoby Myers, forever underrated to score anytime touchdown, plus 250. And then David Montgomery, Matthew's man, under 52 and a half rushing yards, which is minus 120, which means that it's probably going to fall even further down. Matthew, what is your favorite? Spot? Yeah, you know what? Where I'm going tonight um, is uh, Nick Nick Folk over one and a half field goals. I love the, the brand. Pops. Look, this is going to be an ugly, low-scoring game on Monday Night Football. But Belichick, very smart football coach, never scared to say, "Yep, we're going to kick a field goal." It's not one of the big. You know, we always got to go forward and fourth down. He's had multiple field goal attempts in four of his past five games here, and so in a low-scoring game, give me over one and a half field goal attempts for Nick. Folk. Okay, I'm going Ramondre Stevenson. Longest rush over 15 and a half yards. He's gone over four games in a row. I think this is his backfield now. Yes, Damian Harris, we expect, will play. But coming off the injury, I think Ramondre will still get the lion's share of the work and he'll get multiple opportunities, ample opportunities to go for a 16-yard rush. 
very quickly, uh, just while we were in the commercial break, got an alert from the Fantasy Life uh, app here. Adam Schefter tweeting out, further testing revealed that Browns tight end David Njoku suffered a high ankle sprain that will not require surgery, but is expected to sideline him, sideline him two to five weeks oh, per boy. source. They play the Bengals in week eight, a bye in week nine, then Miami, Buffalo, Tampa Bay in week 12. So he's probably coming back some of there. We will have tight end options to replace Njoku on tomorrow's waiver wire show right here on the fantasy football happy hour. Also, DK Metcalf, uh, according to Coach Pete Carroll, says uh, uh, DK Metcalf won't need surgery. So that good. is good news yep. on Metcalf as well. Can I so, give you one last prop? Yes, sir. Velas Jones Jr., over three and a half receiving yards. Book it. He played 12 snaps last week. He's going to get more involved, the rookie, Velas Jones Jr. It's the only By way the way, that we can the over under the in the first half is 20. Give me the under in this one. Bears 0 and 6 against the spread in the first half this week. I think it's a low scoring game, especially in the first half. So give me the under on 20. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. For Jake Croucher, I'm Matthew Berry. It's closing time. We'll see you tomorrow on the happy hour. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. I just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotoworld, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.